Welcome to Monster Review, where we take a look at tech, tech tips, and how to videos. Today, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of my process when designing and printing an item. So the first thing I do is identify a problem. My ride or die just purchased me an Insta360 X3. Huge shout out to her. I do intend on using the camera in future videos, however, I use a DJI Mic 2 system. Link for that review in the right hand corner. The bracket Insta360 cells is for the Rode Wireless Go mic. There were a couple of YouTubers that used the bracket with a DJI mic and although it works, it's slightly visible on your stitch line. So I figured I'd just design and print my own. So the first thing I like to do after identifying what I need my print to accomplish is sketch some designs down. Here's a rough final sketch. Originally, I was going to use the shoe mount clip the DJI mic comes with and attach it to a printed bracket. But while designing the print, I opted for an enclosure design instead to minimize the mic receiver from showing up on the X3 stitch line. I also wanted the screen to face away from the X3 so I can check my audio levels. For the auxiliary wire, it made more sense to route the 3.5mm wire from the bottom of the receiver going to the top where the mic module is connected on the X3. I figured that would be an optimal route, keeping the cable stiff and out of sight from the X3 stitch line. Now the sketch isn't an important process. There were things that I ended up changing while designing the print, but sketching gives you a baseline of what you need. It's a good starting point, which is why I recommend. So now that I have a baseline, I jumped into Microsoft 3D Builder. It's my go-to designing software, and let me tell you why. Number one, it's free. And number two, it's easy. Free and easy, my two favorite things. Yeah, it's not as feature rich as some other programs, but because there aren't so many features, it gives you the very basics to play around with. It provides you with spheres, pyramids, cones, wedges, and cubes, and you can manipulate them into whatever you wanna create. And because of that, it's super easy to use with a design like this. My design was created with nothing more than cubes. The challenging part was getting the precise measurement for the auxiliary port and the screen on the DJI mic receiver. For this, I use a electronic digital caliper. For the most part, it does a great job like figuring out the size of the box to house the receiver. But for the auxiliary and headphone ports, well, you'll see what I'm talking about later on. After designing, it's time to print. There are so many opinions on what is the best 3D printing software. I use both Octoprint and Snapmaker's Lubon. For this, I'll use Lubon. When I import my print, I need to position it in a way where it can adhere to the printing mat. I also like to minimize the X and Y movement as much as possible. So this means having it print from the bottom up instead of printing on its side. After you press print, all that's left to do is wait for this print. It took about three hours. After it finished printing, I then do a test fitting. Most of the time, it's a perfect fit, but Lubon recently updated and I forgot to input the specifications for the GTEC PETG filament I was using, so the print was very rough and poor causing a tight fit. You could use PLA and get better print as it does print easier than PETG, but I find PETG to be a little more durable with prints like these. But in this situation, I'll just pull out my rotary tool and file down the rough spots. After filing it down, the fit was perfect, but the holes for the headphones and auxiliary ports were off. Not by much, but no cable will be able to fit in. So using my rotary tool, I opened up the cutout. Also worth noting, the screen cutout was off as well. I still hit the right area, I just made the cutout a little bit bigger than it should be. Of course, I did save my design, so I will be updating the design for future prints. And the last thing to do is just set everything up and see how it works. I could not be happier with this print. Sure, it's not high quality and I do see it breaking in the near future, but it works. It functions exactly like I wanted it to. The DJI mic works with the uh, X3 and it doesn't show when the stitch line is completely hidden.
And there you go. That's basically my design and print process. And unlike the bracket that Insta360 sells you, that's for the Rode uh, Go mic, this one uh, works very well with the DJI and keeps it completely hidden from uh, the 360 cameras, as you can see here. So, uh, mission accomplished. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't find it helpful for some odd reason, thumbs down will work also. And I hope this inspires you to, I don't know, maybe get a 3D printer and start designing and printing things yourself. This 3D printer is probably the best investment. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Peace.